Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, Dr. Jensen here. So today we're going to look at a practice problem dealing with heating curves. So generally the, the way this gets done is it can, the problem we're gonna do is probably the longer version of this. So, so when you see a heating curve, so the common way that this gets done is that we want to know how much energy is it going to take to, to heat some amount of substance uh, to some other temperature, okay? Um, in this case, oftentimes when we first start out, we're looking at how much heat in kilojoules required to warm 10 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees to steam at 110 degrees. Now, if you're doing this in a book, oftentimes this may be all the information that they give you is just this first up to the question mark. And they, they may throw in the heat capacity of ice and the heat capacity of steam. Um, if they're giving you everything, they would also include the heat capacity of water, the delta H of fusion, the delta H of vaporization. And so it's, it, there's a lot of information here to, to parse out. Okay, so let, let's look at what the heating curve is gonna look like here before we get into the actual problem solving, right? So, so as you do this, okay, usually the heating curves ha have a couple of points. All right, so here we would say this is our this is our negative 10 degrees, okay? So this is where we're gonna start, okay? We're starting from negative 10 degrees. There is some amount of heating that is required. We have to heat the ice up to its freezing point, okay? So this and this would be zero degrees, okay? And then there is going to be some amount of energy that's required for a phase change. So it still stays at at zero, but we're converting from ice over to liquid. And then there is another heating phase where we're going from our liquid up to generating sense of getting to our vapor at 100 degrees. And again, there you have another phase change from the liquid to the vapor. And then lastly, a slight other heating up to the 110 degrees. And again, the temperatures will vary for, for these kinds of problems, but the basic premise doesn't really change. The other thing is that uh, a lot of times test questions may vary where they take parts of this where they'll start here, you know, like it, you know, they'll start the water at like 25 degrees and want you to go up to 125 or they'll start down here at negative 15 and just want, want you to go up to 80 degrees. And so there's different variations in ways that these problems can, can be done and or expressed as far as test questions from, from a professor. So this problem we're gonna do walks us through all the steps. We're gonna take it beginning to end. And so the way I like to do this here is to break this into segments. All right, so here we have segment A, the heating, segment B, phase change, segment C, heating, segment D, phase change, segment E, heating, okay? So each segment is gonna have a slightly bit different bit of information, all right? So I may lose the, we may lose the question here as I flip to another page, okay? But we're still gonna be, I'll try and bring this back up to reference which step we're on as, as we go through this, okay? In each one of the heating segments, okay, every segment, okay, where there is heating, okay, so we're gonna start in segment A, okay? A heating segment okay, utilizes this equation. Q equals MC delta T. Now this is a, generally a first year general chemistry equation. We generally cover this in very beginning thermodynamics. So mem, M here is the mass. 
C is the heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature. Remembering that delta is always referencing final minus the initial, okay? So in this case, our water or our water sample is 10 grams. So that's gonna be the mass throughout the entire experiment. We're not, we're not changing the mass anywhere. Anytime it wants to know the mass, 10 grams is gonna be our value, okay? So we have 10 grams of our ice, here we're we were told the heat capacity. Now the heat capacity is different for each phase of the material. So the heat capacity of ice we were given as 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay. So often I get questions. You know, okay, where did I get that number from? Okay, quite a good question. The issue usually is. If you're working in the back of a book, you're usually not, and then you have to go look this up in a table. If you're doing this on a test, more they would probably have to give this to you because this is this is a constant value, but it's not something that you would have memorized. And and also, this is done for all kinds of materials. You could do this for ethanol, right? It doesn't have to be ice, okay? You could pick any kind of material. So the specifics here are based on the material being being tested. Okay, so this is a given in the problem, okay? And if we remember again our general chemistry 111, or I'm sorry, not 111, but our general chemistry uh, thermodynamics, this is the energy required to raise one gram of the substance one degree Celsius, that is what the heat capacity is, okay? So our change in temperature is final minus initial, so again here the, the final value that we're shooting for is zero, Right, that's where, where it's going to start melting, minus the initial value, negative 10. Okay, it's always T final minus T initial. Okay, so it's just 10 degrees. Okay, and so then we multiply those three, three things together and we get a total here of 209 joules. Okay, and so that is segment A. Where we have achieved 209 joules is required to raise the temperature of ice to 10 degrees. Okay. Now, the, we're going to lose our page here just a little bit as I kind of move up here, but I'll try and leave it at the top here. All right. So, as we go to segment B, okay, so segment B. Okay, back here to, for reference, segment B is a phase change. So there is no heating going on, so it is not our Q equals MCT. Uh, the phase change involves the delta H value. Okay, so usually the equation here was the, you know, the Q value is the delta H times N. Okay, where N is the moles of the substance. Okay, so here we have 10 grams of water. Okay, the molecular weight of water is 18 grams per mole. This is the molecular weight. Okay, now we were told, so if you stop right here, that tells you the moles, right? So. Mass times divided by molecular weight is the moles. These two units would cancel each other out. Okay. So then we need to multiply by the delta H value. So in this case, again, similar situation occurs here. If you're doing this in a book, oftentimes the delta H value is not given. It's somewhere in a table. There's usually tables of thermodynamic properties located in your book, or there's a table in the chapter that you're looking at. So this may or may not always be given within the problem, but it is still needed, okay? So we have moles so are 6.02 kilojoules per mole, okay? This is our, our delta H of fusion, okay? We were given in the beginning of the problem, the delta H of fusion, okay? Now, it, ultimately, if we want to put all of these numbers together, we have to consider things like the units. So in this case, 
since our, our first key value was in joules, I would go ahead and just keep all of these in joules. So we need to do one kilojoule is 1000 joules. And so this will keep us on the same, the same track as far as our, our numbers. Okay, so here in the way this is set up, you would multiply all the numbers on the top and divide by all the numbers on the bottom. Okay, and so I get Okay, 30, about 3,300 joules in the phase change. Okay, so this is our, okay, this is our phase change, solid to liquid. Okay, this is segment B. Okay, as we move on, now to segment C. Okay, let's bring back our chart here for re refresh. Okay, segment C is the heating from, for, you know, the water has melted now, and now we want to heat it up to its boiling point. Okay, so this is a, a rising section. So again, our segment here for, for C is going to be similar to A, so it is a Q equals MC delta T, okay? The dynamic here that changes is not the mass, okay? So the mass stays the same. The heat capacity of the solution or of the phase is different, okay? So the heat capacity of water is different than that of ice and steam. So we have 10 grams still, we're not changing the mass times our heat capacity of water in the liquid phase is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Again, this is a constant. It would either have to be given to you or you'd have to go and look it up somewhere, okay? Now our change in temperature here, we're going from zero to 100 degrees, so the delta value here is 100 degrees C. Okay, so our total energy here of raising the temperature in order up to the boiling point is 4,184 joules. All right, now, Run segment D. Okay, so here let's bring back. So segment D now, we brought it up to 100 degrees C. Now we need to change the phase from a liquid to a gas. So this is our phase change again here. Same setup here. We have 10 grams of our solution. Again, this is the Q equals the delta H times M. So first we need to find the moles, and as always the moles. Again, there's 18 grams per mole. Again, the molecular weight of water. Okay. Now, the delta H value, again, is different. So this is the delta H of vaporization. This one is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, this is the delta H of vaporization. Again, keeping that eventually we want to add all these together, we need to keep them into the same units. So one kilojoule is 1,000 joules. If I multiply all my numbers on the top, divide by all my numbers on the bottom, Okay, get about 22,000 joules. Okay, again, this was a
a phase change. No temperature is being changed. It is simply a phase change. We are converting from the liquid to a sol or gas, to a gas. Okay, last segment. Okay. Last segment here is segment E. Okay, so for refresh here, again, we now have converted from a liquid to a gas, and I want to raise the temperature up to 110 degrees. So again, Q equals MC delta T. Mass still remains the same, 10 grams. Here, the heat capacity of the vapor or of steam is different than that of liquid and different from that of the solid. So here it is, 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius. All right. And we're only going up here 10 degrees. So our change in temperature is 10 degrees. So the final value would be 110, the initial value would be 100, so it's a 10 degree change, okay? And so we get here 201 joules, okay? But that's not, that's not the total value of our problem because it wants to know how much heat is required to warm 10 grams of ice to from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees. So we must then sum all of these terms up, okay? So our A, okay, A was 209 joules, okay? Segment B, our phase change, 33, 44. This is where, again, the key of paying attention to our units is important because delta H is commonly in kilojoules. So if you did this just kilojoules or the delta H value times the moles, these values would be in kilojoules. And then you can't just add the kilojoules to joules, obviously, okay? So again, these are ways that people can slip up or get tripped up when doing these problems. It's not paying, you, you could do the hardest parts of the math, but then slip up on the fact that you didn't, that you just added the wrong units together, that you can't add those units together, okay? Uh, and then C, 4184, okay? So plus 4184, okay? And then segment D, was 22611. And then segment E was our 201. Okay, so if we add up all of these values, we get three, zero, five, four, nine joules. Again, it's kind of a cumbersome unit, so we may convert this over to kilojoules, which is just moving the decimal place three times. So you get 30.5 kilojoules. Okay. And that's all there is to this problem. Like I said, the, the dynamics of this problem can, can vary. Oftentimes, professors will pick different segments for, for this, either individual segments, combinations of segments, or the whole thing would be obviously be the hardest one. Again, there's a lot of data download, a lot of information here, especially if maybe all of this information was given, but they only want segments A, B, and C. So that means information like the delta H of vaporization, and the heat capacity of steam would be irrelevant numbers, but they might throw them in there, which can be extra, which can be confusing. 
Okay, so these are complicated problems, but if you've done a few of them, it doesn't, they, all of these are done pretty much the same way. Okay, so it's just a matter of which segments generally you're, you're being, being focused on. Okay. All right, well, that is it for this video, and I will catch you guys on the next one.